Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name's Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I used the Lost PLA method to turn a 3D print into a solid bronze human skull. I chose this model by Padm Studios because I liked that it's a relatively simple design. I made some minor adjustments to the model and also hollowed it out so that the finished casting will be much lighter. I printed the skull in two parts, which took about 35 hours total. I also printed a sprue and a vent, which will be attached to the skull later on. This skull was printed in a plastic called PLA, which stands for polylactic acid. PLA is a great material for this process because of its relatively low melting point. I cleaned up the edges of the two halves and then glued them together. I found that this Gorilla Super Glue works really well on PLA. It also does a fantastic job gluing PLA to fingers. I used hot glue to attach the sprue, which is what the metal will be poured into. This glue joint had to be extremely strong because this skull was going to start to get really heavy. I wanted to try and hide the layer lines from the printing process, so I coated the skull with microcrystalline wax. It's tricky to apply an even layer of wax on a model like this, but with a little persistence, I was able to do a pretty good job. I attached a vent running from the jaw to the top of the sprue. I also attached a wooden handle, which I was confident would be strong enough to hold on to. The next step was to dip the skull into a ceramic material called suspend slurry. After letting the first coat dry, I dipped the skull into the slurry again, but this time I sprinkled it with silica sand. The goal was to build up a thick ceramic shell which could withstand the heat of the molten bronze. I dipped the skull into the slurry and then coated it with sand four times and then wrapped the entire skull with thin wire. This will help prevent the shell from cracking as the plastic is burned away. I 
coated the skull with another five coats of slurry and then allowed it to dry in the sun for a few days. Once the shell was completely dry, I placed it into my kiln and brought the temperature up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, or 260 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the wax and PLA melt out of the shell without catching fire and can be removed from the kiln. I found that Overture Black PLA burns out without leaving any ash behind. I fired the shell for a few hours at about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit or 900 degrees Celsius, which vitrifies the shell, turning it into a ceramic. The next day, I removed the shell from the kiln and was extremely happy to see that there weren't any major cracks. I estimated that the skull would weigh about 7 pounds or 3.2 kilograms, so I decided to melt 12 pounds or 5.5 kilograms of bronze. This bronze will consist of 90% copper and 10% tin. I started by melting the copper, which took about 40 minutes in my homemade furnace. Once the copper was melted, I added the tin in the form of a trilobite, which I cast in a previous video. I stirred the bronze to make sure that the metals were properly mixed, and then let the furnace heat up to about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1260 degrees Celsius. While I was melting the bronze, I placed the shell back into the kiln to heat it up to about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 550 degrees Celsius. I also heated up some sand and placed it around the shell. This was done to keep the shell as hot as possible during the pour. It was tricky to hold onto a shell that was a thousand degrees and pour 400 degree sand inside and around it. Once the shell was buried in the sand, I quickly poured in the bronze. I made sure to pour as fast as possible to make sure that the entire mold filled before the metal solidified. I removed the shell from the sand and let it cool down for a while before breaking it open. Breaking off the shell is extremely exciting, but it can take a while to remove all of it and expose the casting, especially when it's covered with wire that acts like rebar.
I can't tell you how relieved I was to see that this casting turned out absolutely beautiful. Some of the shell was difficult to chisel off, so I removed the rest of it by using a pressure washer. I used an angle grinder to cut off the vent and sprue. Then I went to work removing any little bits of metal that found their way through the shell, mainly around the teeth and the nose. I spent several hours polishing the skull with a Dremel and a die grinder. I wanted the skull to have a nice contrasting look so I used a liver of sulfur to create a dark patina on any indentations. Then I used some steel wool to polish the skull. The final step was to use a product called Protect-A-Clear, which is a clear coat that will protect the bronze from naturally darkening over time. I'm extremely pleased with how this skull turned out. This was the first time that I successfully cast a large hollow object like this and I'm excited for what I will be able to use this technique for in the future. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. And as always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you think in the comments and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching.